So I had a few people interested in uh, how we converted the car over from carby car to an EFI car. Um, this is a Breeze, I think they call them here in Australia, and it actually comes with a carby uh, D series. Uh, so what? It's not hard to change over, and these are substantially cheaper here in in Australia. I think uh, maybe a thousand dollars cheaper for a non EFI. Uh, version of the same car. So what I'm going to do in this video is just cover in a bit more detail what you need to do to be able to change over to your Carby um, EG Civic over to a EFI one. So let's get into it. So one of the main changes that you need to do is to swap the fuel tank over. Uh, this is pretty easy to do but um, they're kind of like a bit tricky to source. Uh, what I did is I put a fuel tank from an EK sedan in my hatch. Um, I, I believe anything from a DC Integra uh, or EG or EK will probably work in in any of them. They're like kind of compatible. It wasn't exactly the same, but it was very close. Now when you look at, this is the Akabi tank, and as you can tell, there's nothing there's no pump or anything here, you've just got the fuel sender um, but in this section here there's usually the fuel pump what happens is the lines are actually on the bottom of the tank uh, where are they? Uh, here, yeah, so they they feed and return off the kind of side of the tank um, they have three lines like um, the EFI car that run in, three hard lines. So you have uh, three eights being the feed, and it's the same feed for the Carby and the EFI. And then you have a return line, which on the Carby car is one quarter or some tiny little one like this. Um, and then for the breather, they use the five sixteenths. And basically what you need to do is you need to switch that around. So when you put in your tank and you're running new lines, you use the vent line as the return line to the, so the return goes over where the pump is. So you use the two biggest sizes, the biggest being the feed and the second biggest being the return. And then use the quarter inch one as your um, breather. So one other thing is that the straps and everything that mount the this tank on all fit perfectly um, and it straps up there fine so there's no issues with that I guess the only thing I should point out is these lines that go to the um, to the pump over here they have to be a bit longer so they're about 30 centimeters instead of I don't know 15 centimeters so you'll need and they're not EFI sorry the other thing is these are not high pressure so replace your lines to the hard line all the way up to here you can get those at any you know auto parts store just get a kind of one meter length or one and a half meter length of each of the sizes and you'll be fine so under the bonnet here um, one of the other things I had to do was uh, I got an EFI car um, I got the charcoal canister from that car and that sits there uh, the reason I did that is because it has the right size hoses for the breathing so um, this uses the quarter inch hose so I've got the quarter inch hose going to the to the line, that quarter inch line uh, so yeah that's another thing that makes it easier as well if you can get one of those from your local wrecker that's probably the best bet uh, over here, and it's going to be hard to see I've got um, the hard lines coming up oh, I can't get to that hang on I've got the hard lines coming up from underneath here so I've got the feed line which you can see there that goes to the fuel filter and I've got the fuel return so I cut them off down here they're, they're usually a bit longer than that and, uh, and because I'm running the fuel pressure regulator over here I've just got those two lines um, the two second biggest of the hard lines running over here to the fuel pressure regulator and then back using um, kind of your rubber hose with EFI clamps uh, again EFI hose only for all of this stuff 
but yeah that's that's basically it for the install of the fuel lines and the breathing you know the breather part um, I'll now go inside and show you what I did for the wiring alrighty so we're now inside the car and I think I've shown you another time that you need to run basically two wires from the back from the pump uh, one goes and grounds underneath the seat and the other one comes along this sill here and goes to a relay so that relay has um, basically is fused so it this is like a 15 amp fuse here and this is the wire that goes with constant power to the relay and then the relay has one ignition one side is the ignition at sorry the trigger side this is one side is ignition and the other side is the uh, um, e ECU ground so the ECU grounds that when the ignitions on and it, it will this it'll link up this power wire to the back so that's the way it works I have seen people recommending pulling out the whole dash and rerunning the loom from the ECU car for the to get the power to get this fuel pump working there's literally one wire that comes across and it seems way overkill to put that in you're going to have to patch that in anyway um, so if you're worried about cut wires or whatever um, it's going to be the same number of joins I'd imagine so it just seems absolutely crazy to rip out the whole dash and rip out the wiring uh, just to do that but yeah that's literally all you need to do to be able to convert your carby car over to EFI uh, yeah I know this video is probably not for everyone it's but for those with a carby car hopefully you found it useful and if you have please give us a like subscribe if you haven't subscribed or consider subscribing and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next one cheers everyone